Hi, this is Jack Selesky. I'm the editorial page editor of the Forum of Fargo-Moorhead, welcoming you to the fourth installment of the Forum Face-Off. Today we have a subject that's been in the news, a hot subject that's been in the news. It's the ongoing labor dispute at American Crystal Sugar. As usual, our debaters will be from the progressive left, Linda Boyd-Coates, from the conservative right, Scott Hennen. And as usual, you can read their debates in the December 4th edition of the Forum in the editorial pages. Scott, Linda, have at it. All right. Well, it's another forum face-off. Linda, nice to see you. Hello there, Scott. Good to see you. Looking forward to um, disagreeing agreeably. We probably will. Yeah. 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 Agreeably, though. Agreeably. Yeah, we're, we're a civil pair, are we not? We are. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about this American Crystal Sugar situation. All right. We have on one side management, mm -hmm. and we have on the other side um, workers. Correct. And uh, unfortunately, the workers are, in my view, represented right now by some misguided uh, management on the labor side. In other words, the, the leadership of the, uh, of the union. I, I think that they have ulterior motives. I call them professional protesters. Uh, they're being paid. The workers are not by the company. Um, they started to try and get something going over the summer. They finally came to a vote. Workers said, don't want it. Another vote, don't want it. My take, time to move on. Workers find other jobs. Management find other workers. What do you think? So you're saying, we're done. Done. Yeah, done. I, th I think, done. It's, I think it's time to move on. I mean, I, I, number one, applaud the workers. I think they're good people. I've had neighbors at American Crystal Sugar Workers over the years. I don't think they've been well served in this uh, supposed negotiation, which really hasn't been a negotiation uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by the labor leadership, unfortunately. But, you, you know, if I'm trying to buy something from you, and uh, we're going back and forth on price, and you say, no, 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 at some point I go, well, she doesn't want it. And I don't think the workers want it at this point, according to their vote. So let's move on. Right. You know, what I see out of all of this is, I, I guess I'm going back to my experiences when I was on the Fargo School Board negotiating team this year, which is kind of a new experience for me. And the groundwork that we laid was before we even started. We didn't lock anybody out. We didn't kind of draw our lines ahead of time. We took a lot of time, the two teams, actually we were one team, uh, made up of teachers and uh, school board members, finding some shared values. And the number one shared value that we stuck with, no matter how difficult things got, was the most valuable thing that the school, board, uh, school district has going for it is the teachers. And it was our shared value that whatever we did, we would do all we could for the teachers. And I don't see even starting out that same spirit of shared values. I mean, these workers at American Crystal are the ones that have made it possible uh, through good years and in bad. They've taken concessions in bad years to make these kind of record profits, this incredible compensation that the growers are enjoying right now. And, you know, you say it's just time to cut it and move on. I think, you know, when so many, you know, over a thousand workers were locked out and they still, even in that kind of hardship, uh, voted overwhelmingly, over 90%, uh, not to accept what was being offered. Why? What, what do you see? I mean, what I don't understand, they say it's not about the money. It's not about the money. Okay, so the, 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 obviously they value them enough to give them a contract that they even agree is worthy of, uh, you know, right. praise in the financial side. And uh, they had expressed some concerns about whether or not there could be subcontracting sub work done. And they addressed that. Yep. And now, as I understand, there's no serious negotiations going on. In other words, the workers through their union aren't over on the other side of the table saying, we want this, we want that. So uh, I, I think we're just at an impasse. Uh, Clearly, we're not at an impasse, but what the crux of the thing is, is how you see your relationship with your employer. And I think over time, they've been asked to make concessions, and they have, and now when times are good, they've, they've agreed to salary, they've agreed to all sorts of things, but the sticking point, as I understand it, are uh, health insurance, which I understand is a challenge for employers. We had to face that. And... Uh, issues of how you can be replaced. And I think what we're seeing here is it's always easy to bring in cheaper labor, uh, but it's the investment of the workers' time and expertise that's brought this company to the good position it's on, in now. On that, we agree, without question. I think these workers have done a good job. Yeah, I think the company absolutely. said that. I think they put a good forward, a good faith effort forward yeah. with an offer, and the workers have said no. So that's my right. point. And by the way, the company's now transitioning to, to local replacement workers. Transitioning to. Well, that's and, nice and, to see, because when they ship up folks from across the country uh, and throw them in the factory, I don't know that that's... Uh, well, they have no option. They, you know, they have they, lots of options. I, no, I guess uh, what's, what's disturbing to me, Scott, is 
I think we've seen a different mindset, a different attitude, kind of an ugly attitude towards workers and laborers, not just in American Crystal, but around the country. And I think one of the things we're seeing is when you let that relationship sour, uh, you know, as you said, here in the Red River Valley, it's friends and neighbors. It is. And I think uh, we've seen management go a little too far. I mean, well, when you, when you I, call... Can, can I inject and say sure. when, when replacement workers are referred to, to with, by racial epithets, that's not exactly anything that I would call uh, less than ugly. And, and there's been a lot of that going around. I mean, mm. uh, Dave Berg at the annual meeting this week talked about this is a, this is a tumor on the company, a tumor on the, you know, that, 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 that we need to address. And all of a sudden, the, the other side saying, he called the workers a cancer. I mean, it, you know, the rhetoric is flying both ways. We can, we can well, fairly it was, say that. it was unfortunate because when, uh, and it was a long, I listened to it. It was a, it was a long, um, drawn out uh, analogy, uh, which is comparing the the contract as a cancerous tumor that we just have to get rid of. I think that isn't people. What kind of he's talking about the, what's happened in the negotiation. Well, and, I, and then I, and I've been on that side of the table, and when you're talking about the contract, you're talking about your agreement with your workforce, and if that's a cancerous tumor, yes, it it tells the people involved in that process maybe this isn't in good faith and we're not holding that same shared value together. And so I think I'm happy to see that uh, I think the management sees that it's still in their best interest to make a contract happen. That's the latest news. I think, Let's I hope think, it does. I think, by the way, that's the, 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 the public line, that, that it's not a matter of uh, if, it's a matter of when. Uh, but I'm hearing a lot of internal talk about time to move on, which I, I agree. I think it's just we're there. I think this is getting ugly. I think the rhetoric's heating up, and I think clearly they don't want what the company's offering. So it'd be in everybody's best interest. And by the way, again, local workers will be the replacement workers, and I understand they're applying for those jobs in big numbers. So in other words, there's demand for the jobs. The current workers don't want them. Why not move on? Well, I don't think it's true that the current workers don't want them. I think they've invested their time and their family's time and their expertise, and I think uh, they Keep deserve to be treated with respect. Uh, that I agree. I, th I just think they have. They just don't like what's in front of them. Well, so we'll see how this turns out. And Keep I trying. Hope, I hope it's in time for them to have a Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas, too. On that, we agree. We do. Another forum face-off. Thanks for watching.